Hey everyone, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is out and what a better way would be to celebrate than to create Cal's lightsaber from the previous game, Fallen Order. So let's begin and may the force be with us. First thing first, let's gather some reference images for the lightsaber. And better to have few angles of the lightsaber so that we understand exactly how these elements and parts look like. Done. Now let's put them all inside a folder and call this folder refs. Now, like everything good in life, we need to have a proper plan. And when I'm speaking about plan in design, I mean the layout. Thankfully, we have the reference already. So it means to measure out the elements that making up this lightsaber and just create some kind of wireframe on the canvas. Something like this. They don't need to be 100% as in the reference image, but they do need to be relatively close as they will serve us as the foundation for our next step. For our next step, we're gonna use these three base colors. Fill in all those shapes that you created previously with these colors, so just like that. Spread the colors exactly like what you see on the screen. And now for the next step, we're gonna add more information and more details to this lightsaber, because right now maybe it can work as a pixel art, but definitely not a detailed high fidelity lightsaber image. So let's begin with the emitter. We need to do only one half of it. Okay, so in order to create a cutout inside this layer, all we need to do is go to this rectangle tool, hit Alt and hold it on the keyboard and just drag new shape on this existing shape on the same layer. Now, as you can see, it cut this rectangle out of the previous shape. So now we just add some radius to the corners in order to create the second cutout which is exactly the same but in the opposite direction hold alt again as you can see there's this plus sign added to this arrow click on your mouse and drag it to the other side and here you created your second cutout now we need to add these cutouts on the shape alt on the keyboard adding a new shape of this rectangle and we don't need to add round corners this time but we do need to rotate it a bit about 30 degrees. It seems fine to me. Don't catch me on the word. Black arrow, Alt key on the keyboard, dragging it to the other side, Ctrl or Command T to enable the transform tool, right click with the mouse and flip horizontal. And now we need to add a little bit more rotation to it. I think now we can have this element stand out a little bit more. Let's duplicate it with Command or Ctrl J and flip it vertically. So as it seems from the reference images, this gap here, it needs to be bigger. So we will adjust this rectangle and of course bring these two up so that it looks something like this. Control J or common J, flip vertically now, much better. This shape here needs to be a little thinner and also we can add some roundness to it, but only on the left side great looks good let's also group it and call it emitter now in this emitter part let's have two more additional rectangles great now for the switch let's first shrink this part a little bit because in between this gap we're gonna create this beveled edge duplicate the same rectangle again switch it to the left side and now by holding ctrl alt and shift Hold this upper left corner and just drag it down a bit until it snaps. It should snap. If it doesn't snap, well, enable the snap. Great. The same thing we need to do for this right area as well. And now we've created ourselves a very nice emitter, but something is still missing. What's missing is another beveled edge. And again, just like this trapezoid here, Control C, so something like this course we don't see it because it's hidden behind this element. Already starting to get some interesting looks and shapes and really resemble Carl's lightsaber. Now for the sleeve part. And here something interesting is starting to take shape because Cal's lightsaber from the previous game was a broken lightsaber and it had this ending with all the wires and broken mechanical stuff. For this we will need to add some more information to this rectangle. I will just create it on this shape. Again the process is exactly the same like what we did from the beginning of the video. 
first you get the overall idea of the shape that you're going after and then you start adding more and more information on it and again it's you know just whatever makes you happy don't go too far with it it's okay to experiment later and add later as you see fit as it looks now it's already very interesting and looks similar to Carl's lightsaber here first of all let's make it a little uh, slimmer and also let's add some roundness to the corners like this and you know what as it looks at the moment it's fine because we have the separation in color but we will actually change this color to this one what I'm missing is some more information and let's add this information uh, now create this rectangle with smaller radiuses on the corners extend it just a little bit beyond this previous element give a slightly darker gray to this one this is uh, the number of the color now let's duplicate it again shrink it something like this the radius is eight percent let's have here eight percent as well like so and as you can see we're keeping the same height for these elements and let's create another one and shrink it even more extend this part even more now take this previous rectangle again and duplicate it once more reduce the radius a little bit more let's merge these two and change the color to this darker color of the sleeve okay and let's create this little antennas or whatever that's sticking out of the edge and let's do another one and make it a little smaller this little element here maybe it can be a little wider like this this element here let's make it small like this and another one on the other side and let's create some kind of rectangle texture that's going around cool to make it even more interesting extend this one a little bit adjusting the sizes a little bit so that it looks interesting looking great now let's add some additional information to the switch element all we're going to do is going to duplicate this base part and change this color to be a little bit darker shrink it and bring it to the center add some roundness to the corners duplicate it again now rotate it and make a very slim line out of this rectangle stretch it all the way just make sure this part covers the whole base element because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a cutout of it now select this shape and the base shape and merge them together click a on the keyboard or select this path selection tool now select this slim rectangle here and subtract front shape change the color back to this bright color again like it was now with the path selection tool select this uh, rectangle again hold alt and click on the arrows on the keyboard great now we have two we need two more something like this and actually let's do another one just like that create another layer underneath the base one with this rectangle tool just a little bit smaller uh, than the base itself now make it almost the same color that we're using but just slightly darker now this part here can be a little longer now for the button on the switch okay so something like this now for the emitter part again we need a rectangle great suits so perfectly and this is the colors parameters now let's go to the layer styles of this base element of the switch and start creating our foundation for all the gradients and all the effects that we're gonna have let's begin by having some basic gradient on the shape we need to have only the central part as a shadowed area so just have the two opacity stops on the sides as zero opacity and only the central one with 100% opacity the color for this should be darker okay so it should be somewhere around these areas of uh, like 40% grayish tones of the color click on the plus to create another gradient overlay and now let's change the parameters again what we're going to be doing is the highlights so the color should be white and also the opacity stop needs to be really close to the opacity stop that is 100 percent and the reason that we're not doing it in one gradient is going to be very obvious the second we're going to be finished with this piece 
Duplicate this highlight again, but this time switch the angle to minus 90 degrees and adjust it on the bottom part of this uh, of the element. Now we can have another shiny effect, but this time the opacity stops should be so like this and just play with this scale of it. Okay, the moment of truth. Now why we did it? Duplicate this layer style to all the straight elements of this switch and as you can see it works great But if we copy it for example on something that is beveled It doesn't look like a real transition. This is why we actually did it in multiple layers We're gonna be changing these angles to suit the transition suddenly this transition look much much better now copy the same effect on the other side but flip the angles for now let's use this as the base for the rest of the lightsaber and let's just skip to the part where other elements are approximately the same quality i try to do a variation of metallic colors maybe even don't catch me on the word we should create some kind of adobe xd or figma prototype where we actually can switch and change stuff. Just an idea. Let me know what you think in the comments. For the sleeve, if you look at the references, you get it hopefully. The sleeve has a dotted texture. So we will create this texture. Create a new file, create a black square, Control A and select all the canvas, edit the fine pattern, create a new layer and go to this bucket tool and select the pattern from the drop down and select your pattern you just created. Fill the whole canvas, don't worry, just scale it down to the size that you want this pattern to be. I think this looks pretty nice. Now select the white color with the magic wand and just delete it. We don't need to be that precise with this texture, it's not gonna be visible that much. Double click on your um, shape and select blend interior effect and deselect blend clip layer. And now the clip layer are not gonna be affected by the effects that we already have on our shape. Double click on this layer and go to gradients. We already have a bunch of gradients, so I suggest just reset to default list. And now let's have some kind of gradients passing here and there, here on the bottom. And let's do another one on the upper part as well. And let's have another one in the center. Scale is gonna be very small, opacity pretty decent. Let's try to scale it down even more. Looks much better, in my opinion. Let's finish these little pieces of information here. So for example, this is gonna be our button. So let's create some more information on it as well. So first of all, to have some kind of separations, drop shadow from the bottom and to the side, like so. So something like this inner shadow with pretty decent size, brighter colors, like so, and another one, smaller size and smaller distance. Great, now for the previous ellipse, something different here is gonna be our shadow spread like this, purple or blue tints, and another one closer and with smaller size, and the opacity should be a little bit smaller. This way we built distance very nice. Now this element here, from my reference, it kind of looks like glass, a gradient effect, create some kind of tilt to it. So some additional element and let's duplicate and have it from the other direction as well. And, and the last piece is this little whatever. Maybe we even can just duplicate this effect here. Pretty much looks the same. Adjust some parameters on this inner shadow. No, from the drop shadow. This bright drop shadow should be darker. And this drop shadow, maybe the size of it can be bigger. And also this drop shadow here as well. Underneath it also can have a little bigger size, but it should be a little bit bluer. Great. I just noticed that I missed this, so I quickly edited it. It's just a cutout and a back piece with a gradient. Okay, you already know how to do it. I can't believe what just happened. Thought I was recording for the past 20 minutes explaining about hand painted textures and highlights and whatever. And I found out that I wasn't. So instead of going over it and explaining it to you again, I will just say this hand painted elements are great 
to separate your design from any other design because everyone can do layer styles but you know making it yours is actually applying your hand to it so you need to be cautious with it and apply it with care and truly understand where not to kill it and where you actually need it and where you don't so i will be sharing this psd file with you all so that you actually can go over the layers and hopefully you will understand why i did these things in this particular way okay. let's evaluate this on a full screen for a second if i knew this would be the result of our tutorial when i started it i would definitely do it again because it looks amazing i hope you found this video helpful in learning something in the process of creating this amazing lightsaber if so please let me know in the comment section don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel and if this is the first video you see here so go check this video as well till the next time